Hello, my name is Nathan Ashton, and I am a graphic designer. But first and foremost, I'm a family man. This is my beautiful wife, Amanda, and these are my daughters. This is Caden, and this is Micaiah. They are the reason I live, they are my motivation, and they're the reason I decided to go back to school and try to start a better life. The trick was deciding what I wanted to do. Okay, so you want to go somewhere where there is an ocean and do work that you really enjoy? Yeah, Okay. do. <laughs> my girls and I have always loved to paint and draw and build things. We spend a lot of time in our garage. It's our own little art gallery. So I went with graphic design, and that's how I got here. Music is a real driving force for me. Morphine's album, Cure for Pain, is one of the best albums in the history of music as far as I'm concerned. It's about living, it's about facing the fact that this isn't going to last forever, and it's about accepting that life is full of pain and you've got to find the things that make it good in spite of that pain. I wanted to use images of vices that people would recognize and center it around a reminder of our mortality. It's a bold statement about a wild lifestyle, but delivered so smoothly, it makes it very tempting. Arcade Fire is seriously one of my favorite bands to come out in a long time. Their music has a very powerful message behind it about waking up to the reality of the world around you. They've been actively involved in Haiti, working to build up schools, uh, working with partners in health to train Haitian doctors, and provide real long-term solutions for one of the poorest countries in the world. The constructivist movement of the 1920s was all about social reform. They share the idea that we as humans are all in this together. That message really resonates with me, and I think that's what made them such an influence in my own life. And that's why I wanted to do this poster series. A Radiohead concert on the White House lawn, that idea on its own was pretty inspired. Radiohead is extremely open about their political views, and they again have a cause. They speak out for the freedom of Tibet openly, and I love that. I wanted to tie their stance on freedom with President Obama. Uh, everyone has their opinion about the man, I have mine, and I like him. I think he's a genuinely concerned man who's trying to lead a really divided country, and he's trying to offer assistance to a lot of hurting people. I used the typeface from the dollar bill and kept the color palette very simple just to make that connection to money, to reinforce the idea of moving away from money-hungry politicians toward a more civil-minded leader for the country. Reading Cormac McCarthy's The Road is like reading someone's nightmare. The cause of the apocalypse in this story is never defined. You just know that everything is now burned out, dead, and covered in ash. It has an intensely haunting voice, contrasting the despair of life on a burned out planet with the driving love of a father for his son. As a father, I could imagine the fear and desperation of trying to keep my child safe in the face of such horrific circumstances. I did some research. Ash is all that's left behind when everything useful has been completely burned up. And I thought that would be the perfect element to use for my design. I collected ashes from our fire pit and spread a layer inside a shallow box. And then for the type, I cut out letters uh, based on the typeface Gotham because of its connection to transportation signs, considering that that's mainly the lettering the characters would have been seeing uh, to tell them where they were and how far they had to go. The first time I read the book Night, I cried for a week. I took this assignment very seriously to try to honor the story. And in researching the typefaces for the title, I originally created lettering based on the text over the gates at Auschwitz. I liked the concept behind it, but ultimately decided it was really too blocky to work effectively. So I ended up using multiple typefaces that would have been in use at the time and then fracturing them, uh, connecting to this sense of chaos and violence that the author faced. 
The forest in the background is a reference to a section of the story where Ellie and the other prisoners are forced to walk from one concentration camp to another in the snow. Ellie's father died shortly after this march. I wanted to try to depict the loss and loneliness and fear that he must have experienced as his family members were all stripped away from him, leaving him at 12 years old, starved, alone in a Nazi concentration camp. I designed a magazine article compiling some basic introductory information from the UNEC report, The Last Stand of the Gorilla. The challenge was in organizing the information and creating the right layout and the right imagery to match the intensity of the report. I took photos from the original report and created high detail sketches, trying in a way to connect to the stories of Dr. Jane Goodall in the mountains, sitting and sketching the gorillas that she spent all her life with. I tried to use their eyes to plead for intervention. After so many emotionally driven, intense design projects, I was happy to have a chance to do a package design for a fake crayon company. The first objective was to come up with a name, and I decided to go with Motley Puffin. I've always loved the colorful faces of Puffins and thought it would make a great mascot for a crayon company. The assignment was to create packaging inspired by an art movement. I've always loved Art Nouveau, and I love the stained glass work of Louis Comfort Tiffany. As I worked through this project, I realized that melted crayons could be used to create that same look. My girls and I shaved and melted their crayons onto paper panels, and then I photoshopped those into a frame that I created in Illustrator. Because the panels were all in complementary colors, all I had to do to create a variety of color themes was shift the hue of that layer. I think this is one of my absolute favorite projects because I got to get off the computer and actually go work with the girls in the garage to create it. I've always loved artistic expression and how you can tell a really great story through just a single concept. I started this piece a couple of years ago. It's just layers of bubbles, uh, but each layer is colored to represent the overall experience of that particular time in my life. This gold layer represents the end of my college education and the beginning of my real career. I'm extremely excited, I'm happy and eager to get going, and this is a really great time in my life. I'm hopeful for opportunities to use design to do good things in the world.